I'm here at the PAN War, the Pacific North War, which is the first of its kind. And there are a lot of crazy blasters. I have seen some crap in my day. This thing is amazing. If you have any idea kind of what I'm holding, this is an ultimate missile blast connected to a Raven. But if you didn't know anything about this kind of combo system Busme used to use, they had an ability to combine multiple blasters together, which was amazing. They had like flywheel blasters and everything that used this system. And the ultimate missile blast did just that. But if you cut off the top of one of those blasters and you put it on a Raven, well, then you get a Raven that has an ultimate missile blast on top of it. And of course you can deconstruct them. Not that I know exactly how that's done. Oh, right there. Right? Don't I pull it off right there? Right there. Yeah, yeah, Both yeah. of them. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah, yeah. And they do separate, and then of course it's got this tactical, you would call that a, I guess, BBC. It's uh, a bayonet. BBC bayonet. <laughs> and then of course this awesome, awesome Raven with a very, very pretty, that's a voltmeter, right? That's yeah, a voltmeter. And is powered by? Uh, 7.2 volt battery pack. That's crazy looking. I sub C size. It's like, let me try to get this in frame here. It's like, it's not what you think it is. It's kind of weird. All right. So well, so demo yeah. All Go right. ahead and explain what the heck that entirely is. All right. Let's start from the beginning. So, um, off a of missile blast, um, there's two triggers. One is here in the back. There's also a trigger here, which they're connected. You can see it moving. The front one moves the back one, um, and so that I can be holding it like this and trigger it from the front. Um, yeah, so then it's a Raven. And, um, so we already established what battery pack, what like flywheel oh. is it running or So it's a MTB Rhino 130s. I have total rewire, and um, yeah, it's the top of a Tommy 12 or Ultimate Tommy 12 which I, I made this and thought of it like five years ago. I think I made it like 20, 2011, 2012 era. I mean, it's pretty fugly. I just kind of... <laughs> it's seen some action. It's like held on with uh, wood screws and like ABS plastic glue and hot glue to fill in the cracks, which just makes it look like shit. But uh, whatever. And then I got a bayonet and it's made from the connector from a, the original recon that I just kind of cut off and then I glued a uh, PVC core to the bottom of it inside of the little rail and then I s screwed wood, gr wood screws into it to just hold it and then just foamed it all up using standard buffer techniques of weapon creation. Do you get a lot of tags out with the, the uh, well, tactical bayonet? I've, yeah, I've, it's definitely worth the wait, I'll say that. I mean, it's you don't kill, get many kills with it, but when you, when, it, when you need it, it's really nice to have it there, you know? And just really quick, I'm sure you've noticed what he's wearing. Oh yeah, yeah. This is the most hilarious thing. I'm gonna actually take this for a second. I had no idea what this was. He's been wearing it all day. Turns out it's a tactical beer holder. <laughs> yep. Representing Olympia, of course, because we are in Washington. But this is really, really cool armor. It looks very similar, in my opinion, to Master Chief's kind of upper torso armor. I don't know if yeah, it was yeah. modeled after that. So uh, it's made mainly of uh, leather, metal, uh, plastic, various adhesives, contact adhesive. Um, the, out the outer layer is two millimeter ethyl vinyl acetate foam that I then went over with a, uh, a uh, razor blade and then with a heat gun to make this pattern of like twirls and then plastic dips. And then the inner is foam and uh, athletic tape and, and fabric. He's got a radio up here, but the best oh, yeah, walkie -talkie. part. What's on? Is there anything on the other side? This is like shoulder strap, strap clip. Oh, and okay. Then, but the best part is uh, I tried to try to model it in the back to look kind of like a jetpack. So it's two <laughs> motorcycle speakers, a car audio amplifier, and a regulated uh, 12 volt 6 amp DC power bank. And uh, and then it plugs into my iPod, which is in my pocket. And uh, it goes really loud. I I, I didn't want to you know I don't want to get flagged for whatever music you put in right there, but oh. Ha <laughs> ha
<laughs> yeah, Good but point. it's awesome. He's been rocking this all day, being the official bard on the field, yeah. which upsets me because, of course, I had my speaker and it's completely drowned out by his awesome system. But I have just never seen armor like that before. It is amazing. Yeah, so uh, as you can tell by my uh, light blue colored sash, I'm also a bard and amp guard, and uh, this is. Uh... I got different playlists for the different song of, you know, the song of power, the song of, of visit, all the different songs. I've got I've got playlists on it so I can rock that off my phone real quick. Anyway. It's so cool. It's absolutely awesome. Hey, I love your hat. Oh, thank you. Your safari hat. It's amazing. I'm hunting Nerfus. Yeah, I'm hunting Nerfus. Be very, very quiet. Oh, and I'm also Kieran Melrow. My website is kieranmelrow.com. And I play with the Olympia Foam Society. We're on Facebook and also OlympiaFolkSociety.org and the Amp Guard uh, Kingdom of Northern Lights. And there will be links for all of that down in the description box below. Cool.